Turn to Numbers 5, and uh, Michael, if you would, just for a minute, uh, remind folks, um, even though we're not taking up an offering uh, this morning, we still need God's grace, and um, to keep doing what we're doing, we have a feeding coming up next month, and uh, trust me, the people of Kenya don't have the government handouts that they have here. And uh, so there is great need there. The Catholic Church ran us out of our office space. By the way, are we moved in now? We're close. He's been sending me pictures of the guys that uh, are working to rebuild us a new office. And uh, I think God did us a favor on that because it's cheaper. Cheaper rent every month, so we appreciate, we appreciate the Catholic Church for running us out. But they said they needed the space to store and stockpile all the food that they're not giving out to people. And uh, I don't know what their deal is, but we decided not to stockpile food, we decided to give it out. And uh, so maybe those of you who are watching or listening in the Turkana area, maybe you might want to ask the Catholic Church where all that food is. And why they're not giving it away. That might make them a little angry, but I don't care. So uh, please remember to uh, pray for our work and our ministries that God will continue to bless. Uh, those of you who are members here at Bethel, remember to give. Um, I, don't, I don't sit and just beat everybody up over money. Uh, God showed me years ago what he can do uh, if we just do what he said and how God would bless it. Uh, I'll tell you a little story while we're doing this. Um, when Lisa and I would go out for, for years, we, we had uh, some books that were given to us by Southwest Radio Ministries. Their, their Hearthstone Publishing went out of business, so they just gave us some of their books that they had left over. When we would go preach at a church, we were using video cassettes back then, you remember those, and uh, duplicating them here, and uh, we would I think I was able to duplicate three videotapes at a time, in real time, had to copy them just in real time. So now we're able to, um, I think when all the machines are going, we can do about 60 DVDs in uh, about 12 minutes is what we can do. But anyway, um, we used to put a little price tag on everything, and I'd, I'd always make it a point to tell people, if you don't have money, just come see us, and we'll let you have what you want. And um, I was going to go preach at a church in Indianola, Oklahoma, and um, God began to deal with me about selling the DVDs and the books. And I said, well, okay. Okay. I won't sell them. So what I did was I was going to be preaching there all week and I set up the table like we normally do and I put a little basket there and put a little sign there that said donations. And I put everything on the table and I left it there that week. And I mentioned to anybody that came, we had good services every night. And I mentioned to them, the table out there is everything, even though there might be a price tag on it, everything this week is free of charge. Uh, you don't have to pay anything for anything you take. Uh, if you take more than what you think you'll need, be sure and give that out to somebody else. Uh, if you want to, you can give a little donation, put it there in the basket. And I left it there that week. So the last service, um, I was going to leave right after the service and try to drive home that night. And um, so I got going down the road and curiosity was bugging me. I thought, I wonder if there's anything in that basket. So I'm driving down the road, it's dark, and I'm counting money in this hand while I'm driving in this hand. And there was about as three times as much money in that basket as there was at any other time when we sold things to people. And I just started I started bawling. I said, God, you were right. I'll never sell another video ever again. 
And that was before we started doing the Watchman broadcast. And so when we started doing that, and we started putting them online, and then uh, Roy, Bonnie was here helping me. She would come and help make DVDs. And we had one little duplicator at the time, made five DVDs at a time. And I called Bonnie in. I said, Bonnie, I said, I'm going to share something with you. I said, God just kind of laid this on my heart. We're going to have a little thing where we mail out DVDs to people on a monthly basis. Everything that we do here, we're going to send out a, a Sunday sermon DVD with all the Sunday morning sermons. We're going to send a Watchman DVD of all the Watchman broadcasts that do that month. And then an MP3 disc, which is an audio of everything that we do in that month. I'm going to send that out. And as I was, I was praying and God said, write this down. So I started writing down what we was going to send out. And the thought came to my mind, now, God, we're going to be, have to be buying DVDs and we're going to have to be sending money out in postage and things like that. Should I charge something for that? And God said, you know better than that. And so I remember I got tickled because I announced it. And the first month we did that, we had 20 people sign up. And I'm going, wow, that's amazing. 20 people. So I think now our list is, I don't know, what is it, Alicia, if you're watching... Uh, we send out, I know it's less than a thousand uh, every month, but um, usually between 800 and a thousand different packets go out each and every month. Never charged a dime for them. In fact, I've got people offering to sell them and I'm turning them down because they're not for sale. And God is blessed. Amen. So that's just an example of if you do what God said, you don't have to worry about who's going to pay for it. Amen. Amen. Are you tired of sitting at home? You're tired of not going to work. Are you tired of being quarantined? Well, don't be because that's what I'm going to preach this morning. Um, I mentioned this a few weeks ago. It occurred to me. Let me see if that's Alicia or my wife. About, Lisa says about 850 packets go out in the first week of every month out of here. Now that's about three or four, it'd be four discs uh, for the month of April that we're sending out. So four times 850, you do the math on that. That's about 3,500 discs that leave out of here every month. That's just what God does. Um, anyway, I had mentioned a few weeks ago that... God actually had a plan in case one of the Israelites ended up with a contagious disease. He had a protocol for that. God knew that leprosy was a big issue back then. It's not so much now. They have treatments for it. But it was a big issue back then and it was a very contagious disease and it will eventually kill people. And it's easily spread. And so God had a plan for that. And he basically said anybody that was suspected of having leprosy, they were to be separate for seven days. Seven is God's number for perfection. It's the number that God uses to sanctify things, to clean things. And then he said at the end of seven days, they were to be examined, looked at again. If they still suspected that they had leprosy, they were to be quarantined then another seven days, a total of 14 days. And they were to be set aside and kept away from everybody else. This was not punishment necessarily on them because it's not really anybody's fault. If you've ended up with a virus of any kind, it's not really your fault. It just happens. And, uh, but God had a plan for that and it was a plan of separation. Our president in wisdom has decided not to invoke certain measures that absolutely mandated that everybody must stay at home, or face severe punishment. We're not, we're not under any kind of federal government mandate. He's left it up. He's done what the Constitution requires. He's left it up to the individual states, which I believe is where it should belong. Amen. God gave Israelites local jurisdiction, local government. Because not everybody in America is alike. Amen? I mean, there's a reason why we don't live in Chicago. 
And it's the Cubs. Sorry, Cubby. There's a reason why we don't live in New York City. And I heard from a man uh, yesterday, in fact, Brother Steve said, they live, he don't like for me to say upstate New York. But he said, where they live, it's about 800 miles to New York City. And he said, we don't want to be treated the same way they treat everybody in New York City. We're not New York City and don't want to be New York City. And I agree with that. But God gave qualifications. He gave rules. He gave guidelines for if something was contagious or something was unclean, he gave rules and guidelines to the people. And it was for their benefit that he laid these things down. So in Numbers chapter 5, here's the rules that God initiated. Numbers 5 verse 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel. This is not a suggestion. This is not, uh, if you do this, then I'll be happy with you. This is a commandment. And if God said don't do something, don't do it. If God said do something, then you must do it. Command the children of Israel that they put out of the camp every leper. Now again, this is not a punishment to those who were unfortunate to have gotten leprosy. But it was a preventative measure to make sure that nobody else got leprosy. Put out of the camp every leper and everyone that hath an issue, a running bloody issue or an open wound and whosoever is defiled by the dead, those who have to handle a dead body, God gave requirements for them that they are unclean for a certain amount of days because any contagion that might be on somebody who died might still be viable even though the body is dead, which is what they're saying now about this virus. Those that die of the virus, when they die, the virus is not necessarily dead. You cannot count on it being dead. They must be handled in a certain way and then whoever handles that body must be sure to protect the people that they are around so that they do not get what that person died of. Just common sense rules. This is back in the day where they didn't understand what a germ was, what a bacteria was, what a virus was. They didn't understand that. They just knew. They had a knowledge that if somebody comes down sick with something, there's a chance that those around them may come down sick with the same thing. Stay away from them. And he said, everyone that hath an issue and whosoever is defiled by the dead, verse 3, both male and female shall you put out without the camp. You shall put them that they, here it is, underline this in your Bible, that they defile not their camps in the midst whereof I dwell. Now there is a spiritual aspect to this. God's not afraid of getting the virus. God's not afraid of getting leprosy. God's not afraid of being defiled. But he said, I dwell amongst the midst of a clean people. God is a clean God. Somebody say amen. God is a clean God. Before the priest would go into the sanctuary, there was a, a brazen laver, they called it. It's where we get the word lavatory from. And basically it was a wash bowl. Before the priest was to go into the sanctuary, into the presence of God, he must be washed. Before he goes into the presence of God. You write that down in your mind somewhere. Before you get ready to go in the presence of God, you better make sure you're washed. Amen? Wash with the water by the word of God. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 5, washed in the blood, the Bible says. So he said, you put them outside the camp. They defile not the camps in the midst whereof I dwell. And the children of Israel did so and put them out without the camp. As the Lord spake unto Moses, so did the children of Israel. So I want you to think in the natural realm, how, what kind of sense this makes to make sure that if you know somebody that is sick, then it behooves you to stay away from them unless you are immune to that. I don't have to worry about getting the mumps ever again. I've had them. My body knows how to deal with that. I appreciate those who have had this virus that are donating their, what, their plasma 
in hopes that their immunities might save somebody else's life. I think that plus the hydrochloroquine, let me tell we take malarone every time we go to Kenya, which is hydrochloroquine, which is a preventative in case we are bitten by a mosquito that contains the malaria virus. That way, if we get bitten, it won't keep us from getting malaria, but it'll severely reduce the symptoms that we have. It makes sense. I don't know why some stupid governors don't let that out in their state. But anyway, God said, separate from them. And I want you to think about the spiritual ramifications of God's common sense. Uh, turn your Bible to 2 Timothy and then we'll go to prayer. Appreciate you being here. Appreciate those of you online. We wish you were here. Say amen to that. At least act like you wish they were here, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 3. When you get there, say amen. We'll go to prayer. While you are at home, if you are not able to work or you're not able to get out and about and do the things that you would normally do, I'm going to ask you, how are you spending your time? How are you spending your time? Amen. I appreciate that. Second Timothy chapter three. Let's pray. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would help me preach. Lord, my mind is distracted this morning. I'm worried about my family. I'm worried about my new grandchildren. Lord, I pray, dear God, that you'd bless all of them. I pray, dear God, that you would give healing. That you would watch over them, dispatch angels to stand guard over them. Father, I love my family and I pray to your God that you would watch over and protect all of them. Father, protect them physically from the diseases that are out there. But Father, I also pray God that you would protect them spiritually. Father, it gets easy when we don't come to your house, when we don't come to church, it gets easy to not go. And I pray, dear God, that you would stir it up in the hearts of all of those, Lord, who are part of Bethel. That their heart's desire is that they would be back in your house. Father, I appreciate these that have come. Lord, I'm not laying any guilt on those who did not come. I understand why. But Father, I know, Lord, that this thing's going to run its course before too long. And I pray, dear God, that it still be in the hearts of those who are out to come back to your house. Father, that you would watch over them, that you'd bless them, that you'd keep them safe. Put it in our minds and in our hearts, dear God, to stay away from things that we ought not be around. Father, there's people that we should not, should not be around. Things, Father, that we should not be around. Things we shouldn't listen to, things we shouldn't see, things we shouldn't read. And I pray, dear God, that you would quarantine our minds and our hearts, dear God. Keep us separate the way your word calls us to be. Help us to be watchful and to take great care, Lord, in the life that you've given us to live. This life, Father, is a life of separation. We are in the world, but we are not of the world. And I pray, dear God, that you would drive the desires of this world far from us. Father, when we came to you for salvation, that's what we wanted. We wanted to be not part of this world any longer. And I just pray, dear God, that you would put a shield around everybody and put it in their heart, dear God, to stay behind that shield. Father, just bless your sheep. Help us to understand the wolves are out there. And they're coming to get us. So bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, while I was praying, my mind went to that image 
where Jesus talked about in his word, he said, I'm the, I'm the good shepherd. And he puts his sheep, when they're not out in the pasture feeding, he will bring them and he will lead his sheep into a sheep fold, which is basically a barn or a pen with a fence around it. And the shepherd then stands guard over the gate to make sure that nothing comes in to get those sheep and to make sure that none of the sheep escape. Now, I'm not going to ask you this morning to raise your hand, but if you're like me, there's been times when you've looked outside the sheepfold at what was out there and had a desire to go out, to go back to where you came from. And if it wasn't for the shepherd taking his rod to you, saying, get back in here, you might have done it. Amen. There are things out there that are not good for us. We need to train our children this way. We need to, we need, as adults, need to be reminded that there are people, there are things, there are wolves. Paul said, after my parting, shall grievous wolves enter in? Not sparing the flock, he said. Jesus warned us about the wolves dressed how? In sheep's clothing. They're not sheep. And when the shepherd finds it out, don't be surprised when he takes the rod after them and drives them out because he knows they're not sheep. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Look at what Paul told us to turn away from. You know how they tell you to cough? They tell you, go like this. <laughs> of course, now you've got to wear that all day long. But when you cough, you're supposed to turn away. If somebody's, if you're standing in line at Walmart Pharmacy, and those people standing in front of you are going, <laughs> get back. Amen? Makes sense. Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What does perilous mean? Dangerous. Very dangerous, deadly times shall come. For men shall be lovers. Of their own selves. That's. Click. Click. Lovers of their own selves. You know, I want to tell you something. We've got a nation of people. Who think more of themselves. Than they do anybody else. Our government so far has not imposed strict guidelines saying if we catch you outside of your house, we're going to shoot to kill. It's not that bad. They're asking people to be responsible and to watch out for other people, to think about somebody else before you go milling around. Amen. And listen, it doesn't bother me a bit in the world that they shut down all the taverns and the beer halls and the dance halls and everything else. But anyway, men shall be lovers of their own selves. Men shall be covetous. Men are boasters, proud, blasphemers. That means they've got a mouth that blasphemes God. When you blaspheme God, it should taste like soap. Amen? Amen, mama? I'll never forget. She only washed my mouth out one time with soap. One time's all it took. You ever had that done? Amen? They're blasphemers. Dis hey, young people. Young people here, young people online. Listen to me. Disobedient to parents. Don't hang around children who rule the roost in their house. Don't go around those kids. Parents will keep their kids away from other children knowing that they are those children who are disobedient to their parents. Mama, why can't we go over so-and-so's house? They're our friends. You're not going over there because I said so. You may not understand why, but that's why mom and dad won't let you go over there. Because they know that those friends that you picked out, they don't have the same morals, they don't have the same values, they don't have the same ideas, 
And those children get away with things that you would never get away with. That's probably why you picked them out. That's why I did. Disobedient to parents. Unthankful. Unholy. Without natural affection. If you can murder your own child, you are without natural affection. If you can do that and it not bother you the rest of your life, you are without natural affection. If you can vote for people who say, if the abortion is botched, let's kill it anyway. If you vote for somebody like that, you are without natural affection. There's something wrong with you. Truce breakers. It means they never keep their promise. They're going to lie through their teeth to you. Stay away from them. False accusers. Incontinent. What does that mean? They cannot control themselves. They have no control whatsoever. When they use that term in a hospital or a nursing home, it means that they've dirtied themselves. They're incontinent. They, they can't help it. They are incontinent. They cannot have, they do not have any control over what they do and what they say. He said, stay away from those people. Amen. Fierce. Despisers of those that are good. When you go to pick out friends, if they despise your church, if they despise Christianity, if they despise your Bible reading, if they despise your parents, stay away from them. Traitors. We got people in this country that are traitors. Amen. Amen. Heady. High-minded. Lovers of pleasures. More than lovers of God. So... Here's what, I mean, think about it. This is what God's done. I've got a whole nation that won't go to church. God said, I'll close the churches. So now they can't go to church. I see that. Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness. Watch this. Even those that come to church can be like this. But denying the power thereof. What is the power of God? Where is the power of God? It's in the Word. And yet they will deny that. I heard some lunatic, somebody sent me a video to watch. I watched about five minutes of it, about all I could take. And I wanted to check this guy out and see who it was. He was, he was boasting and bragging about how they, they, they sh everybody should come to church. And he said, you're afraid of this virus? He said, all you got to do is bind it in Jesus' name and you won't get that thing. I'm going, you're crazy. What you're saying is, you don't ever get sick, you liar. I know where he got that doctrine from. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Paul said, from such, turn away. Those of you who've been watching us and been part of our church for years while you're online, there's a reason why you don't go to the church in your neighborhood. There's a reason why you won't go to the churches in your town. There's a reason why you won't go to churches within 100 miles of your house. It's because they are exactly like this. They hate the Bible. They hate the Word of God. And you said, I'm not going to be part of that. God bless you for that. Amen. He said, from such, turn away. That means they're dead. They are unclean. And if they're unclean, they're contagious. I mean, how long would it take if you were listening to some clown on the internet? How long do you take, think it would take for their words to have an effect on you? I mean, if you didn't... I mean, at some point, I believe you can get immune to a lot of that nonsense. I can listen to it and I'm just going, that's baloney, that's garbage, that's nonsense. I, I'm immune to it. I've been inoculated. I've been vaccinated with the Word of God. Amen? Stuff don't get to me. But not everybody's like that. And if you find yourself having weaknesses concerning faith, or concerning certain sins. Ask Roy if he still goes to the bars every Friday night. He'll tell you no. Why? You gotta stay away from those places. Why? That's his weakness. Yeah, I'm talking about you. He woke up. That's his weakness. 
He ain't going. He doesn't run with those chickens who do those things. Young people especially. Maybe I'm just preaching to young people today. Or maybe I'm preaching to adults who ought to know better. But some things you just need to stay away from. I've been warning people about the liars on the internet on the left wing and the liars on the right wing. Both are equally as dangerous. If they cause you to fall short of believing what God said, they're just as dangerous. Okay? And I'm just warning you. Maybe you should shut off the internet and just read your Bible for a while. The liars are out there and they're on both sides. Paul said, from such turn away. Like the, I warned about a guy and I had people coming out of the woodwork at me. His name is Mike Adams. He runs a, a natural healing kind of website selling a bunch of stuff. Calls himself the Health Ranger. For years I've been, people have been directing me to his site to read certain articles. I've known him to be a new ager in the new age practices. He's one of these that would tell you, oh, your body's got healing energies in it. You need to release those healing energies. You need to quit eating that processed food and eat, some, eat this grass here. In fact, we'll sell you this grass in a pill form if you'll just swallow that four times a day. It'll release your body's healing energies. Show me in the Bible where you got healing energies that are locked up somewhere. People get sick and die all the time. It is appointed unto man once to die, the Bible says. They make it sound like if you got sick, it's your fault. God never said anything like that. He said, from such, turn away. Turn to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. This is the book of wise sayings. Proverbs is like a mini Bible. Have you ever noticed that? It's a mini Bible. In fact, all the forms of the word know, such as know, knoweth, knowledge, 66 times in the book of Proverbs. All the forms of the word, I think it's wisdom, 66 times in the book of Proverbs. It's a mini Bible. God, if you look over it like at verse, at, uh, ch verse 1 of chapter 2, My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thine heart to understanding. He's talking about his word. Listen to God's word. Chapter 3, verse 1. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. He's talking about the Bible. Then chapter 4. If you look in verse 14. Young people, listen to this. Adults, listen to this. Enter not into the path of the wicked. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of the sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. He said, Stay away from these people. Stay away from their websites. Stay away from their TV programs. Stay away from their blogs. Stay away from their podcasts. Stay away from their books. Stay away from their magazine articles. Stay away from them. Enter not into the path of the wicked. And go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. I never did know why, but when my sister and I were young, our cousin, you know exactly what I'm going to say, don't you? Our cousin, we used to walk down the street, go to the store to get candy. We'd go down to Arkansas, visit, and walk down the street. This is the days when kids could walk down the street. And there was a house... I had no idea who lived by there, but my cousin didn't like this person. So when we walked by her house, we had to hold our breath until we got past it. <gasps> I never did ask who it was and why she was mad at him. I don't know why. Huh? I don't know why I thought of that. If you knew somebody was in a hospital room with a contagious disease 
Why would you go in there unprotected? He said, avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief. And their sleep is taken away. That sounds like meth people. Their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to what? Fall. Let me tell you something. You've got people that know you're trying to live right. They don't like that. There's something, there's a spirit in them that does not want you to succeed in living right. The prince of the power of the air is the spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, the Bible says. And it's just for some reason, they think that they're not going to be satisfied until they cause you to fall down in sin with them. I don't understand that, but that's how they are. Family members will do that. Friends will do that. Neighbors will do that. Co-workers will do that. They sleep not except they have done mischief and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. Roy, is there violence in wine? There's a boxing glove in every bottle. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked, notice the contrast, is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. They don't see the error of their ways. They see nothing wrong with their life or their lifestyle. Maybe it's because they think that you're going to judge them. Or maybe it's they think that you think you're better than they are. Or maybe they just, maybe they just get it in their mind because they've got a spirit that works in them. That they just want to see you fall. But they're going to try their best to destroy your life. Stay away from them. Stay away from them, the Bible says. Turn to Romans 16. Romans 16. Here's one of those places in the Bible where it kind of makes sense. If you think about, we know in Revelation 13, we know the false prophet is going to cause everybody to receive a mark. Now, quit reading the internet websites that tell you that they're going to sneak in the mark of the beast in some vaccine that you're going to get. That's not how it's going to happen. The people who receive the mark choose it deliberately. It is a religious issue, not a medical one. It is, a, it is going to be a choice the same way Eve made the choice to eat of the fruit that God said don't eat of it. She chose it and she did so willingly. The devil and his devils did not grab her, force her at gun at gunpoint, said, you're going to take this or we're going to kill you and your family. Never did anything like that. He's more subtle than that. He talked her into it. And she willingly went for it. Romans 16, 17. Now think about what he's saying here. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Underline that because that, I think, relates to Revelation 13. Mark them. Here's wisdom here. Here's the mark that he's referencing. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And avoid them. Sad to say that I've had to put out people from this church whose doctrines were so contrary to Scripture that I could not allow them to spread that inside this church. I've warned people about certain people, told them, you better stay away from them, they're dangerous. 
I hate to do that. I hate to be that way. But I have a responsibility as pastor to make sure that what comes out of this pulpit is clean according to the Word of God. And what gets spread around behind my back, I have a responsibility to warn people about others who would cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned. If there was somebody here and I knew that they were telling everybody, well, I, we, I read the King James, but I, we, you know, these other Bibles, there's nothing wrong with that. Or, you know, that pastor, he's good, but I, I believe this way and I think, I think this way is better. I got to warn you about that. There's a church that started up from a man who used to be in this church. They're meeting every Saturday now, pretending that they're keeping the law, following Jewish traditions and Jewish customs, which is nothing more than Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah. And I've warned about that while he was here, to stay away from that stuff. Sad to say, he didn't listen. So with some people, I have to tell you, avoid them. Stay away from them. Don't listen to them. Verse 18, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ. What does that tell you? They are not sheep. They're not sheep. They're wolves. What are they trying to do? Draw people unto themselves, the Bible says. Make disciples unto themselves. Follow me, is what they're saying. They serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has come abroad unto all men. I'm glad, therefore, therefore, on your behalf. But yet I would have you wise unto that which is good and simple concerning evil. Maybe you don't need to go researching every bad thing that there is out there on the internet. Amen. Be wise unto that which is good. Be smart about what's in your Bible. And quit worrying about what everybody else is doing. And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. Somebody say amen. amen. Looking forward to that one. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. But he said, mark them. That cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine. And avoid them. That turn away from them. They're poison. And they will poison you. 2 Corinthians 6. Are there conditions upon which God will accept us? Yes, there are. There are conditions. God does not say, I'll save you. Doesn't matter how much sin you do. Doesn't matter who you run with. You can still do all the sin you want to and I'm still going to save you. God never said that. But here is what God said. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with who? Unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And the answer is none. What communion hath light with darkness? If you read Genesis 1, you'll see that when God said, let there be light, and there was light, that God immediately divided the light from the darkness. What concord or what agreement, what contract hath Christ with Belial? That's the devil. He tried to get Jesus into an agreement. It didn't work. Jesus said, I'm not going to have any part of it. And what agreement at the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. So here are the conditions upon he said, I will accept you on these terms. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Amen. Touch not the unclean thing. That means don't listen to unclean things. Don't listen to unclean music. Amen. Amen. You know, when we look back now on the 60s and 70s, at the music that they played back then, we can kind of hear overtones that maybe we didn't pay attention to when we were young. And we are going, oh, that's what that means. 
right? But nowadays, it's easy. Because the songs have gotten so vulgar and so grotesque. Just listen to it for about five seconds and you're going, I've heard enough. Young people, don't listen to that music. Don't do it. It draws, let's say amen to that. It draws us, doesn't it? I mean, I, I like music. And I like songs that I'm ashamed to say I like them. But I like them. My flesh likes them. And I want to listen to them. And it ain't right. And now it's far worse. Young people, don't listen to that garbage. Don't get drawn in by it. Refuse it. Refuse it. TV shows. Don't watch them. Well, I watch them because I examine how wrong they are. No, you don't. Let's quit lying to each other. <laughs> you watch it because you like it. Stuff on the internet. Stay away from it. Stay away from it. Don't listen to it. Don't watch it. Stay away from it. It's poison. It's deadly poison, and it'll kill you. God said, come out from among them and be you separate, saith the Lord. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. What do you think God will do if he catches you watching that stuff? What do you think he's going to do to you? He's going to whoop the fire out of you. You think God will smite your heart over that? If he doesn't, he's not your father. That ought to scare you. If you don't get convicted about some of that stuff, something ain't right. Amen. Proverbs 1. I'm almost done. But, hey, we ain't had church all week. Amen. Proverbs 1, verse 10. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Mm -mm -mm. I want you to think of Bernie Sanders on this passage here and Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi and that whole crowd. They, they lurk privily for the innocent. You know who the innocent are? Unborn babies. That's about as innocent as it comes. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. You know what gets me? Some of these liberal politicians are so adamant to throw Trump out of office, they want more people to die of this virus so they can't have a fair election in November. I'm about sick of it. They want a war, they might start one. People up in Michigan showed them that, didn't they? Look at verse 13. We shall find all precious substance and we shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us and let us all have one purse. That's socialism. When they steal your wages and your stuff and give it out to everybody else and they say, we'll all just share in everybody's money. It doesn't work. It's never worked. Ask Venezuela how well it works. Ask Cuba how well it worked down there. Ask the Soviet Union how well it worked over there. China is cheating. The Communist Party doesn't mind being capitalistic and making profit. They just don't want to give it out to the people. Bunch of liars. Amen. But he said... Verse 15, my son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path, for their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. 
So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. God said, stay away from them, my son. Don't vote for Bernie or Biden or any of those rascals who want to take away your money and take away your liberties and take away your guns and take away your Bible too. Nancy Pelosi, I'm praying for the president, you little liar. Turn to 1 John chapter 2. She makes me sick. No wonder they want to shut down the churches. Amen. I'm sick of them. 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So stay away from those people. Do not set these people up as your idols. Don't set these people up as your heroes. Don't set these people up as people you want to follow. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Little children, he's speaking to us young people, all of us children. It is the last time. We're in the last days. And as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now there are many Antichrists. Whereby we know it is the last time. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. You find out the traitors. The Bible will show you who's really on your side and who's not on your side. Thy right hand, the Bible said, will show you all of your enemies. You read this Bible and you start finding out that some of the family members and some of your friends and some of your co-workers and some of your neighbors ain't really on your side like you thought they were. You'll find it out. God will show it to you. Amen. And when you find it out, stay away from them. One more. Revelation 18. These people are sick. They have diseases. Now God can heal them. God can straighten them out. God can cure them. But be careful of them. They're dangerous. Revelation 18, 1. After these things I saw another angel. In fact, let me do this. You, all you kids, all you kids online, look at this group here. Us adults... Raise your hand if you found out that something your mom and dad tried to teach you was right and it cost you a lot of trouble. Look. Look at us adults telling you, don't do it! They're poison. You live with mistakes that you can never undo. And it's hard to carry. After these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. He's talking about devils. Now, while I'm on this subject, I want you to think about this for a minute. Those of us who have made bad choices in life, Ask yourself this, why did God allow you to do it? For the same reason why after you get this virus, if you live through it, you're immune to it. I mean, once God lets you fall and he picks you back up with his rod and you've endured that beating, do you ever want that beating ever again no I never brought another Guinness Book of World Records to church did I mama even though that whipping didn't hurt too bad but I didn't tell her that but the other ones did And it makes you not want to do those things anymore. Now you're immune to it. Amen? Amen? Now you know you should have stayed away the first time. Now you know to stay away. 
Verse 5, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, here it is, come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. You know what that double means? Second death. She's not just going to die once. She's going to die forever. And her works in the cup which she hath filled to her double. God said, come out of her. What did God say to Lot? Lot, stay in Sodom now. I'll put a bubble around you and protect you. No, come out. Come out and be separate. Was Noah and his family separate from the rest of the world? Absolutely. Separation, people. And see, maybe these words might have an effect on you. Maybe they won't now. Because sometimes people just get bent on doing the wrong thing. But we're here to tell you, when you do, you will wish you hadn't. But then, if you live through it, you'll avoid it. And then you might be able to warn others, don't go down that path. Don't go down there. I had a dream one night. I'm not kidding you. I don't usually tell dreams, but this one always stuck out in my mind. I had a dream that, I don't know, something, there's some big war going on in our country, and they had, like, people in, like, refugee camps, Christian people. And there was a, a man who was like a general who was on our side, and he was, like, protecting everybody. And I went up to him, and I said, is there anything I can do to help? And he said, stand here. There's only one way in this place. Stand here. Don't let anybody come in and don't let anybody out. I remember that. So I'm standing there like a soldier with a gun. I've never been a soldier in my life, but I'm walking a post. And I see this somebody trying to leave our camp in an old car. And so I shot at the car to warn the guy, don't leave. But he left. I've been down some roads before. Mistakes I've made, doctrinal mistakes I've made. And warned people, don't go down that road. I've been down there. If God lets you come back, you won't like what you find down there. How many of you know exactly what I'm talking about? You've been down that road and God lets you come back. Stand your ground and warn everybody. Don't go, don't go that way. Don't go down there. Don't go, don't stay away from those people. Stay away from that website. Stay away from that group over there. Stay away from that church over there. Tell others. Warn them. There's dangerous places. We've been there. What we found there, we didn't like. God let us come back. Please don't go down there. Amen? Let's pray. Father, I thank you. The messes I've made that you cleaned up, I'll never get over it as long as I live. The roads that I've walked down that I should have never walked down them. The mistakes I've made that I should have never made. God, why? Why? But, Lord, you had a lesson that you wanted this son to learn. And there was no other way for me to learn it than the hard way. And Father, I'm very thankful today. That you pulled me out at the right time. 
and you rescued me when you didn't have to. You could have, probably should have, turned me over, but you didn't do it. And I have nobody to praise but you. But Father, I'm here to warn others. There's roads, God, that I don't want anybody to go down. I don't want anybody to have to live with what I live with. Father, I pray, dear God, that you would open up somebody's eyes today. Help them, Father, to see the road they're on is not right. The way they're living is not good. The path that they've chosen, Father, is the wrong way. And you've called us to come out of that and leave it and turn away from it and warn others, don't go down there. God, give us a heart. Not to meddle in somebody's business, not to interfere in everybody's life, not to try to tell them what to do all the time. But Father, please, if somebody asks us, help us, dear God, to warn them and to tell them the truth. Because we don't want anybody to make the mistake that we made. And help us, Father, stay away from this world. Stay separate. This COVID virus will be long gone one of these days. But sin will always be around. Help us to turn away from it so we can be your people and you can be our God. Thank you, Jesus, for hearing us, for mediating for us, and for being our captain. Help us, dear God, to stand a post and warn others. This is the last days and there are many antichrists. Help us to warn people before it's too late. We pray in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, amen. God bless you.